Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at wind power. So what is it? Well, it's a very simple concept. The idea is very simple. Wind is basically a solar power. I already made a video about solar power there. Basically, sun creates a temperature differential and based on that, wind moves. And also, it also helped by the fact that Earth is spinning. So it is solar energy. Directly, it is solar energy. It's just converted into different form so you let that energy does the work for you so it is a very old tech as you can see shield ships and all that and denmark and all that it's kind of old technology we know what it is we inherently understand what it is so how do we get electricity out of it it's very simple we put turbine basically blades and that they rotate generator sometimes directly sometimes like in small scale they generally directly rotate the generator in something big scale like you know few megawatt scale they generally rotate a gearbox based on that uh, they rotate the alternator and if you have a lot of wind turbines we call them a wind farm so this is how we get the electricity out of it now we have to specifically uh, as I already mentioned in my video about uh, solar power is that solar power is almost reaching cost parity. So what is uh, its condition? Well, it has very low land footprint. Basically, let's say you are a farmer and you have very hundreds of uh, hectares of land and you can lease the land to some company that is, you know, putting up so, uh, wind farms. Everything is good. You can use the land. That's the crucial part. It has very low la land footprint. As you can see, like in this uh, context, is very easy to understand. It's like this land is completely usable for agriculture and all other things. So very low footprint as in like double profit. Okay, awesome. But it has very high initial capital cost. These structures that you see, they are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Inherently, they are idiotically expensive as, as in like... Uh, they do provide a lot of power they do provide a lot of benefits but inherently do you have the money to you know buy them short answer no most people can't no, and i mean countries also can't because they are very very expensive and specifically the new turbines that are very big they are more efficient but they cost like 20 30 million dollar per piece and you need hundreds of these so suffice to say capital cost is very high now that in itself would be a very big deal but is also maintenance intensive what does that mean basically it has so many moving parts and it's directly working based on motion sooner or later something breaks like uh, the blade might get damaged let's just things happen gearbox might break down the generator breakdown it has so many moving parts the more moving parts you have the more likely you have the opportunity that something's gonna fail so in that sort of scenario it's also maintenance expensive like uh, maintenance is not free like yes there is a probability that your solar panel can break there is a probability that solar inverter can break but those probability compared to this versus that it's not in the same part so even though it has very low land capacity and the raw amount of energy it gives is very high the capital cost is very damn high then if cost is so bad then why there is so much interest about it well it has the option to provide power 24 into 7 well, basically this is a wind farm and this provides power 24 into 7 now this wind technology as we have it is the closest renewable energy that we have that reaches what we call base load power as in my video of grid scale power storage uh, i specified uh, the grid generally gives you a constant power output and you want constant power output so you can be like uh, properly control it load will of course go up and down but you always need to know that can i count on this farm to provide me this much power 24 into 7 into 365 until you know it's the commission yes now there is a lot of fluctuation but due to our recent advancement in satellite technology and uh, weather forecast we can like see things coming a miles away nowadays and uh, all these things are placed in a very wind rich area where like we do a lot of r d into making these this is not like you know we just went there and put it we did a lot of research and more more often than not all the solar farms uh, have this issue where no matter what you do at the night they are like off flat out off 
this can provide power at night also and day also and in windy scenario and in rainy scenario so all things considered if you combine every data point this can provide base load power now of course they have to scale down the base load they cannot be like let's say this power plant that i'm showing you here india is uh, one of the largest plant we have is like roughly 1000 megawatt so the their base load would be roughly let's say 600 just to be on the safe side they can be like okay 600 is our base load okay but they have base load it will be producing that much power at night and yes there is a lot of ups and down but ups and down is not on and off it does not go to off unless they put it somewhere where there is a risk of it most places don't have it so this is why there is so much interest in it. like solar can flat out it's almost reaching cost parity and it's uh, it does have the raw capital needed like as in land mass and solar flux it has everything needed to it that can allow us to power entire humanity based on solar but problem is we do not have a gigawatt scale uh, power storage other than as i made in my video pumped hydro is the only one that can allow gigawatt scale uh, power storage but that can only go up as two gigawatts and like these plants can produce that much power in one or two hours so suffice to say uh, we really need uh, very very new level of technology for grid scale power storage flywheels is just not gonna cut it super capacitor super capacitor is not gonna cut it so we need something on a whole different level for solar to be viable wind farm on the other hand is far more manageable so what we can expect in the future well uh, the solar farm has this one advantage the more you put on to it, like the more land mass you invest into it the more profitable it becomes so that's why you see the investment in ludicrously large wind farms as this one is china's wind farm as of now as i speak to you that's roughly 8 gigawatt as in 8000 megawatt and they were planning to scale it up to 20000 megawatt basically 20 gigawatts and we're gonna see super large turbine as i told you like the bigger the turbine the more uh, powerful it becomes in terms of like efficiency as in like this is the turbine that i could find that's the biggest turbine that's roughly nine megawatt of power from one turbine so but again cost is idiotically high but as more uh, mass production happens as more computer modeling happens and uh, simulations are done to make sure the cost is optimized we can expect these to become cheap and then we're gonna see a lot of offshore wind power the reason for this even though these have very low footprint nobody likes to see this this is this looks ugly and they are very noisy now many people do not care many people care about it so to you know put it out of sight out of mind kind of scenario we want to put it off sheet and it has another benefit the benefit being that because the water surface is smooth the wind flowing on top of it is generally at few percent higher intensity and we can predict weather on sea much more effectively than we can predict on land like on land everything plays a role into it like is there trees there is there a forest there is there a uh, landmass there like a mountain or a hill but here it's a flat so we can calculate it very efficiently only consequence of this is the, the idiotically expensive the turbine itself is expensive then to make a pylons that either go to the seafloor or a floating pylon uh, suffice to say it's kind of expensive so I think uh, in the future as we move forward and uh, we have to make our grid renewable now you might be like why like why can't we just bone curve? because coal is gonna run out let's say you don't care about planet but you have to care where your electricity comes from like flat out mining coal over time the coal price has went up over time petrol prices went up so sooner or later it will reach a point where it's just too damn expensive or a point where you have no more coal as in like uh, it's just never gonna happen on an earth level but cost will become so high that it will be like yeah you know we can't uh, use coal power plants to produce electricity cheaply these will provide cheaply so people will use this it's all about economics that's why china is investing so much like they have flat out no consideration for atmosphere and flat out uh, they they were the most polluting country practically speaking in terms of coal power plant they did not even have uh, flu glass treatments in many of the coal power plants that's why they created what's uh, the smog basically scenario where the entire cities were covered into smog because the coal power plant nearby was not uh, doing the basically necessary treatment but even they are like yeah sooner or later we're gonna run out of coal and like what you gonna do then and this sooner or later is not necessarily like okay today we have coal tomorrow we don't have any coal it's like today our coal is let's say hundred dollars per ton tomorrow it's hundred and fifty dollars per ton two years from now it's three hundred 
and then it's like 700 at that point it's like the electricity that you get out of it is so expensive that nobody's gonna buy it like nobody's gonna pay their electricity bill if it's like yeah fifty thousand dollars in your electricity bill people are like yeah no no man no thanks so for that reason sooner or later we have to use renewables simply because of our pocket you don't care about anything else but you have to care about your pocket so wind plus solar equals almost all our problems solved and plus uh, with advancement in grid storage uh, grid scale battery storage we can see a future where whole nations as, as i don't mean small nation in like you know european union i mean big nation as in like uh, usa china india like big population billion billion people kind of population can be powered by renewables and uh, wind can play a very very significant role in the coming future so this was my presentation i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't don't worry about it dislike it and leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of science thursday and uh, i would suggest you subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching